this is the only one I found. I've been coming to this park um, for about a month now, like every couple days. And this is the only wild sweet pea that I found. This is a very controversial plant. So at every wild edibles class I've ever done, somebody's always like, but what about the guy in Into the Wild? He supposedly died from eating sweet peas, a, a version of this plant. The first thing I want to say about that is that story is very inaccurate. You read the book, it says one thing, you watch the movie, it's a completely different story. John Krakauer has been criticized heavily for a lot of his books, but uh, Into the Wild is probably the biggest criticism he's received. There's an author, his name is Samuel Thayer, really awesome dude, a forager I respect. In his book, Nature's Garden, he has a great account of Into the Wild, kind of the true story. Basically what ended up happening is Chris McCandless, he starved to death. That was the official coroner's, like what the coroner determined. But it wasn't a very good story because, you know, this kid going out into the woods and for many, many months not getting enough calories and then starving to death, well, how are you gonna sell that? It's a much more interesting story to sell this sort of scary fable about how plants, he just ate a plant and it killed him. So he supposedly mistook wild sweet pea for wild potato. After he died, both wild sweet peas and wild potatoes were studied extensively and neither of the plants were found to be poisonous. In fact, one of the botanists that studied the plant said that I would eat both plants. So this is a very lovely, tasty plant um, that tastes just like a bean sprout and it grows all over. It develops purple flowers. Sometimes they're yellow. Kind of looks like a, a house pea. It's a vine, right? Today, a lot of what we're going to be doing is I'm going to say, please describe it to me. Please describe it to me. So just take it, take a look, pass it around. Take one, pass it around. So what does it look like? It looks like a sweet pea, really. It looks like a sweet pea. I need more information than that. Rabbit ears for leaves. Yeah, rabbit ears for leaves. Curly cues. Got the tendrils. Ah, I like curly cues and tendrils. So initially when you go out and you look for plants, they all look green and it's hard to differentiate between the two. And this is where we get scared because we're like, oh, well, how do I learn what a sweet pea is versus a sweet potato or whatever? You learn about it in the same way that you learn how to identify a cabbage versus a head of iceberg lettuce. Our brains have folders in our heads and the folders just start storing information. And that information is called a search image. So when you were very young, you probably didn't know the difference between a lemon and an orange, right? Your parents could show you a lemon and an orange. You'd be like, I don't know. They both look round and they both have a skin. And eventually, as you came in contact with lemons and oranges, you started differentiating one and the other. The same thing is going to happen when we talk about plants. So when I say, what does it look like? And somebody says, oh, it has tendrils. That's a very good identifying characteristic that's going to help you recognize the plant. So we're improving our search image. And when you look at a plant long enough, the folder gets really full. And then for the rest of your life, you'll know this is a wild sweet pea. The sweet pea also teaches us something called Mary stems. And Mary stems are the growing parts of plants. So when a plant is growing, Mary stem actually comes from the Greek term uh, to divide. So when cells divide and split apart, those are called meristematic parts. So when a plant is young, it's light green and it's very flexible. It's full of sugars, it's full of minerals and vitamins. And that's when it's most nutritious and most delicious. As the plant gets taller or longer, the plant cannot support itself if it's all flexible. So it starts developing a solid foundation, very fibrous. So, you know, if you feel this plant, the bottom is very, is, is stiff compared to the top. So this part is meristematic, like the tops of asparagus, for example. You could snap them off, they're very flexible, they're very delicious, but you go down the stem and it's very fibrous, not as delicious. So as foragers, we're going to want to look for the tops, the meristematic bits. So on the wild sweet pea, in addition to the flower, the meristematic part is this tender little bit. On we go. Here you go. My gift to you. Uh-huh. Sergey. Sergey, yep. So is the, so the full plant, 
plant is edible. So the whole plant is edible, so but is we're going to talk about that. It's it's kind of um it's very objective. While you can eat this part, how hungry are you? How hungry are you? More often than not, I just go through and I'd harvest like a small bowl of those, and that's what I'd throw on a salad. Okay, on we go.